Pressure. Y'all know my husband. Empress's father. <laughs> he clowning me right now because I'm over here snacking on some bazooka bubblegum. He said that's grandma bubblegum. <laughs> it is though. Five seconds, but that, that sugar be hidden. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, let's get to it. <laughs> Still in the journey, y'all know that. Bedtime stories. I've heard all the songs at this point. Seen all the videos. Now I'm just doing what I always do, right? For the last, what, 10 albums? However many albums we went through at this point. Just getting to know, like, the feel, the context of what was happening at the time Bedtime Stories dropped. Um, so we're about to watch an interview. See what Madonna was talking about. 1994-95. It's so weird to me. Like, whoa, we in the 90s now. Like, it's still weird to me. Like, we in the 90s. But anyway, let's go. Let's go. Mmm. Not sure if I like it just look on Madonna. Um, too, too fillerish for me right now. I don't know. I'm not really feeling this. All right, anyway, let's go. <laughs> Bedtime stories. It sounds so nice and gentle to me. And cozy. And cozy. Yes. Have you become a more kind of loving, mature, cozy person? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> um, no, but, but I guess that's the kind of mood I was in when I was writing the album. But you're not anymore. No, it's not that. It's just that I, I think that my personality has many different sides to it, so... I feel like Madonna been saying my personality has many different sides to it since uh, 1984. <laughs> right here, let's go. Sometimes I feel aggressive and sometimes I feel more thoughtful and introspective. And I would say that that's more the mood that I was in when I was making the album. More romantic. And the mood right now? Um, what is my mood right now? <laughs> Maybe it's a little bit of both. Yeah. If I understood you right, uh, you wanted to kind of change the stereotype ways that men and women are treating each other. Is that right? Yeah, that's one of the things, yeah. So what did you want instead of the, what we have now? Well, precisely that, 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 that basically that women were judged by the same set of rules that men that men were, and that mm, that women had the same freedoms, the same kind of privileges and opportunities that men do. Yeah. And but, uh, because women, I know it's not. I mean, I'm sure it's it's going to be a long time coming, but that is something that I would want. But it's not like that now. I mean, you've been punished. You say yourself you've been punished. Yes. Why have you been punished? For that reason. For precisely why, I mean, what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But what did you do that was so uh, threatening to people? Uh, <laughs> nothing that lots of other men haven't done. But the fact is, we still live in a, in a society where, where men make the decisions and men decide what, you know, how women are to behave and what's permissive in society as far as sexuality is concerned mm -hmm. and um, men dictate those principles and I suppose when a woman steps forward and says well here's my idea or this is how I see it this is my sexual fantasy etc etc I think that frightens a lot of people I think it frightens women too not just men so um, jag känner mig så överraskad av Madonna. Hon är pytteliten i verkligheten och bräcklig på något sätt. Lågmäld och eftertänksam. Jag hade väntat mig att hon skulle vara mer amerikanskt gopoig och provokativ. Speaking of you as a role model, uh, I mean, when you're talking you sound as a feminist, any, any feminist. But, but what's new with you, I think, is that you say you, you can use anything to get what you want. You can... I mean, you can use your sex appeal, you can... Well, you can use what you're, what you're good at, whatever that may be. You know, if you're a clever person, then that's what you should use. If you're a funny person, then you should use your humor. You know, it's whatever your strength is. So, 
what you have to do is to find out what your strength is and then use it. And if you have beautiful tits, you should use them. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's what you did. Well, I don't think I just used that, but I think that one shouldn't um, negate or, you know, that side of them. It's not, I don't think that you have to ignore your sexuality or your sexual charisma or whatever you want to call it. I don't think that's an, a negative thing if you want to get ahead in life, so to speak. So what's the difference between you and a striptease dancer? <laughs> what? I'm richer. <laughs> <laughs> good answer, good answer. But see, in reality, it's why I love them like overseas interviews because they ask like, I don't want to say like quote unquote real questions, but they ask different questions versus what like the American journalists were prepped to ask, you know what I mean? <clears throat> why? I guess I've used more of my assets. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you give advice to young young girls who don't know how to behave themselves in this world, would you would you say to them who don't know how to behave themselves? Yeah, like? I mean, who does when you're young? <laughs> so would you say use whatever you have? I mean, if I would say be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. I would say you know. I mean, a lot of it has to do with self-respect. If you don't. If you have no dignity about yourself and no self-respect and you go out on stage and take your clothes off, then that is the message that you're communicating. It depends on your own self-possession and, and, and how you feel inside. So I would say that that's the important thing. I mean, I have many things to say and many ways to express myself if I am just simply in the act of taking off my clothes and doing a striptease, then I am exactly the same as a striptease artist. But If I have something to say, or I write a song, or I'm performing on stage, or I'm dancing, or I'm acting in a movie, then that adds another dimension to who I am. When you have lived out your fantasies like you do in this book, do they still turn you on afterwards? Well, I don't think that fantasies have to be necessarily lived out. I mean, I, I was saying these are my fantasies. I wasn't saying this is what I'm going to go out and do. I think having sexual fantasies and having a lot of them is really healthy. All I'm saying is you're sexual, there's nothing wrong with having sexual fantasies. And it's good to have an active imagination and to play in your mind um, and feel comfortable with them. And um, the things that I wrote about in my book do still turn me on. After, after uh, the sex book and some other things that you did, Some other things? Yes. I won't go like into that. Like what? <laughs> well, like uh, your, your tour. Oh, the gap is back. And I'm like, tell about I don't look different. I, I, I don't know. It looked more prominent in this interview, unless I just haven't been pinched to her. But I feel like I haven't seen this gap for a while. Like, maybe some years. <laughs> okay, now let's go. Good show? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what did you find out about human mm -hmm. nature? Well, I realized um, how, what a taboo subject it is, to, um, the subject of sex or sexuality, and how kind of backwards we are in our way of thinking as far as sexual politics are concerned, um, and how sexist our society still is, um, and how frightened people are of change things that are different. You're seeing that you're not sorry, but apparently a lot of people didn't get the message. Well, what is wrong? <laughs> well, when I say I'm not sorry, what I, what I mean is I'm not sorry that I did it. What, what I, I am disappointed that, that um, people didn't understand what I was trying to say. What went wrong is precisely what I was saying that I realized, and that is that I think it was just too much for people to... Um, to get all at once with, you know, all the things that I was doing at once is mm -hmm. too much. It was too much. Too soon, too different. It was too much, and again, I feel like at that point, like I remember Madonna was riding high off of the controversy from um, the Blind Ambition Tour. I felt like Madonna was really, if there was any moment where Madonna was feeling herself, I feel like that whole 
blunt ambition up into a radical wave was Madonna like really, really feeling herself. And I still stand by it. I feel like Madonna was shocked when the book was not like to see um, when the book was not received in like this. Not only I know she made money from the book, but like this kind of cool factor, right? It's like I, again, it's the first time Madonna was really getting rejected in her career since before the Virgin album. <laughs> like so, I, I I still stand by. I think Madonna was just shot. Like, well, dang, I got the Midas touch. What happened? You know what I mean? Like that's what I think. Yeah. So if you were gonna do it today, you would do it maybe a little smoother? I probably wouldn't have released my album and the book right at the same mm -hmm. time. I probably would have spread the Right, there was no uh, separation of the I two. Get, I tend to get work in a frenzy, and as soon as I do something, I want to get it out, so, yeah. I see your sex. That was good self-reflection, though. I feel like real self-reflection, too. Great interview so far. Book as a kind of... Uh, Almost handbook. You say, these are my sexual fantasies, <laughs> uh, they're okay. Mm -hmm. You have yours, and they're also okay. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of a uh, Dr. Ruth of the pop world. <laughs> um, well, I, I never yeah. thought about it that, like that. I, I would rather, I mean, Dr. Ruth, she's a doctor. People call her up for advice. I mean, there's a real exchange like that. Uh, I, I would rather think of myself as a, as a source of inspiration rather than someone who's telling you what you should or shouldn't do. And rather think of myself as setting an example by just, by, by what I'm doing. A lot of people think that you, you would do anything, but you have uh, definitely limits. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go any further, you wouldn't take any beaver shots. <laughs> well, that's not necessarily true. That's the decision I made for the book. Actually, I had a contractual agreement with um, the publishing company. And my limits are, are, I mean, people think that I would do anything. The people that think that I would do anything are people who aren't paying attention to my message and aren't listening to what I say. And everyone has limits. Um, that's, that's like I said, as long as I'm being true to myself and I'm saying what I want to say and I'm getting my point across, then, then that's my limit. Yeah. So what direction are you taking now? In terms of music? In terms uh, of everything. You seem to do everything all the time. <laughs> well, I'd be working. I'm busy. mostly concentrating on my record and my music and... Um, well, I guess you'd have to listen to the record to understand. Like, I would love to know how Madonna today feels, right? Like, that's what I said, I, I would rather a docu or just a good, real interview with Madonna. Like, let me interview Madonna, right? Because I would love to know how it feels for her, right? Or just any professional person who was always on go, like literally, she was on go for 10 years straight and just going, right? And of course, work starts to slow up, the tour starts to slow up. So how is life adjusting to the free time, right? Is the grass greener, right? Is it better to have more free time or do you, does she miss like the hustle and bustle? Cause I remember hearing Tina Turner say, you know, um, she was ready to retire, you know what I mean? Because she worked hard. So I wasn't just done to have that same sentiment. And by the way, I started watching that Fade documentary. Um, So far, so good. Not Nothing earth shattering or anything like that. But all right, let's go. But it is a more thoughtful record. It's a more romantic record. And um, I don't know. Like, like we were talking in the beginning of the interview, I guess I'm looking to make myself happy in another way, which is in making myself happy. So how is that to be more specific? Yeah, I don't know what you just um, said, Madonna. <laughs> recognizing my achievements and, and, and um, 
maybe not being so hard on myself, but spending more time enjoying my success, relaxing, mm -hmm. things like that. Spending more time with my friends. And you are doing that too? Yeah. Is it hard because you seem to have been a, a workaholic? <laughs> yes. Um, actually, it's not as it's not as hard as it used to be. I used to be really frightened to have some free time, mm. you know, nothing to do, unplanned days, stuff like that used to really freak me out. But now I kind of like it. <laughs> and I want to know today, right? But then, do you still like it, right? Or do you miss the hustle and bustle, right? Because I really do think workaholics, like, it's something I feel like innate within a workaholic to say, like, okay, I gotta be doing something, I gotta be doing something. You know what I mean? Like, a workaholic is a different breed of person. All right, <laughs> let's go. Happiness lies in your own hands, you sing. Where, where did you think it was before? Well, I would say that. Jake's a good question. In general, like it's most people's habit to look look to other people and expect other outside situations to make you happy, mm -hmm. and when you're not happy, to blame it on someone mm -hmm. else or some something else. Mm -hmm. And I would say that I was right along with that line of thinking. So, Am I wrong? Well, I'm trying not to be that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what gave you this insight? Life, learning, making mistakes, just experience. Mm -hmm. Mer konkret än så vill hon inte gå in på sina erfarenheter. Madonna har ju mer än någon annan bokstavligt talat klätt av sig inför press och publik. Och ändå känner jag ju längre intervjun pågår att hon inte släpper någon in på livet. Allra minst journalister. Oh. When I saw the film in bed with Madonna, I saw it now very recently once again. Uh -huh. I got the feeling that you were very kind of trapped in your fame and lonely. Um, well, that's two different things. Um, I think celebrity, to everyone, not just me, is a kind of a, a trap because while you have the privilege to, you know, go where you want and meet who you want and everyone knows who you are and and people appreciate your work and things like that it's the other side the negative side is that you can no longer just go for a walk on the street or mm -hmm. be an observer of humanity uh, be anonymous mm -hmm. just you know do things spontaneously you have to plan everything and so that side of it is a trap um, for instance I'm in the beautiful city of Paris but it's not really easy for me to go outside for a walk, which I'm dying to do, without getting into an elaborate disguise or, you know, having my dress. Dang, that's sad, right? But trade-offs. That's what life is, right? Trade-offs. <laughs> I was in the front and having a decoy. I mean, it's really complicated. So that's the, the trap side of it. Um, and you can't and, kind of uh, hide yourself in a, in a wig? Oh, uh, yeah, I can. but. It's not spontaneous. Yeah, who want to do that? To go through yeah, all the time. An elaborate process of mm -hmm. not being me. Um, and and the loneliness part of it would I would say comes from maybe simply that you know longing to go out and do things anonymously. Isn't that crazy, right? So stars, right? Celebrities, people are driven, spent the. Formative years of their life, trying to prove I'm so different than everybody in this town, get up out of here, I'm different. But then to get this like super hype, right? The super famous, like, I just want to be like everybody else. <laughs> ah, isn't that funny, right? Sometimes you just, it's just too difficult and you don't want, you, it's easier to stay in your room. Mm -hmm. Dad, you can come in, but I gotta get dressed. Come on in. Hi. I gotta take off my sleigh. Hi. 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 Oh, God. Sorry. Stop. Sorry. Let me change, okay? Sure. Did you like the show? It's great. A couple of little scenes there were a little... x -rated. You can do without. Right. Burlesque. Dad, burlesque. you don't understand. They all lead to something. Arty. I know they're arty. It's got nothing to do with art. It's got nothing to do with art. It's, with it's, it's the journey that you go on. It's, 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 um... You get on this train at the beginning, you have to stay on to the end. Exactly. You, you take a journey. It's cathartic. To me, it, it, it didn't seem as if you got a lot of... Uh... Yeah, what 
Christopher at? I ain't seen Christopher in a minute. Uh, I know y'all said Christopher had wrote a book. Did he write the book around this time? Drop the comments down below. Encouragement and recognition from your father. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh -huh. <laughs> Are you still seeking it? Um, not so much. I think I have come to terms with that and realized that my father feels more comfortable just kind of um, ignoring the celebrity side of my life and the fact that I'm this big superstar, whatever you want to call. Um, I think it, it, I think it helps him to just treat me like all my other brothers and sisters if he just ignores that yeah. you're famous. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you've had a, a deep wish that he would see you as you are. I have. Including. I have, but you know, my father has was raised a different way. He has different values. Yeah. Um, he's very traditional yeah. and old-fashioned. So it's not a kind of private battle you fought in public. All the things you've been doing. That's what an artist does. I mean, that is, you know, if a painter feels a certain kind of pain, he expresses himself on canvas. A songwriter, through a song, I mean, I think that you can't help but put some piece of your soul in, in, in any kind of work you do. And so, in a way, it's kind of therapeutic. Mm -hmm. A lot of people also think that you reveal everything about yourself. But I don't think you That's do that it. at all. I think I you know very, very little about you. Mm -hmm. oh. Yes, y'all, this interview with Lady Stina is on it. I totally agree with Stina 100% as well. Madonna, again, just like Prince, just like Michael, very calculated. And we only know what they want us to know. And sometimes they put out misleading things about themselves on purpose. <laughs> Let's go. Are you a shy person? I can be. Yeah. Do you yourself think that you've revealed a lot? I've revealed when I want to reveal. That was that boss kick in. I reveal when I want to reveal. <laughs> but have you revealed a lot about yourself? I mean, do people know a lot about you? No. No. <laughs> mm -mm. The only people that know a lot about me are my close friends. So and them siblings that people always forget. But they, your siblings are the people in life that know like the real unfiltered you up until a certain age though. But still, they see you in the light in a way that ain't too many people see you ever and probably never will. <laughs> so I'm going to give you very, very short questions. And um, if you want to. And I'll give you a very short answer. I, if you okay. Can. Okay. Well, I have to have to add a couple of minutes. Okay, yeah. So, what are you most proud of? I am most proud of the fact that I've maintained my sanity and my sense of humor in spite of everything. And what do you regret? Nothing. Nothing? Mm. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I don't believe nobody who said they don't have no regrets. Um, I just don't. I feel like if you could change something, no matter how big or how small, if you had the opportunity to change something, you probably would. Lucky you. What turns you on? Thinking of a Madonna answer, right? <laughs> Honesty. You had uh, several abortions, you said. Oh, oh. I don't think that's necessary to tell you. Whoa, what is getting wrong? <laughs> Why do you want to know? No, because it says several, and several sounds so much to me, you know. It's well, some people think that two is so wrong. It depends on your yeah. point of view. Okay. And condoms? What do you think of them? I think they're, they're essential. Yeah. You had a very interesting discussion with Norman Mailer about condoms. Yeah. And it all kind of ended up in condoms are no good because then you get more careless with who you sleep with. So, mm. Well, it was a very, it's a very complex discussion. Yeah. There are many sides to the story, so mm. it's hard to... If you have several hours, we can talk about okay. it. Okay. But do you really think it, that you should only make love to someone that you're willing to risk your life for? No. I just think that, in general, it's better to be in love with someone. Children? You want to have children? Yes. 
Are you not afraid that the years are ticking and, you know, all that? Uh, I guess so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. First of all, how old is Madonna supposed to even be right here? Second of all, Stina, Stina, Stina. Now, that abortion question was a little out of line. But I'm still going to give Stina her flowers as an interviewer because she disarmed Madonna to basically go in with the kill, right? <laughs> These last few minutes. She's like, yeah, so abortion, kids. Um, Yeah, tell me all about it. And wow, like... Again, the celebrities are today, they all, they got no kind of thick skin because Madonna, you can tell she got uncomfortable, but she didn't run away from this. It, and that's one thing I respect about Madonna as well. Like, she ain't run away from it. She, she asked it. Let's go. Are you in love with Tommy? <laughs> um, I think I am. You look as if you are. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, am I blushing? <laughs> Who this supposed to be? Tupac, Haitian Jack, Dennis Rodman, the baby daddy. Drop the comments down below. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Sandra Bernhardt girlfriend. Drop the comments down below. So are My you, hands are getting sweaty. Uh -huh. So are you happy with this love? I mean, is it, uh, does it love you? Yes. Mmm, -hmm. <laughs> mm, very girl is there. She was in love for real. I don't feel like jumping. It's not go hard. All right, I enjoyed this interview. I feel like this is has been one of the best Madonna interviews I've seen in a while since like Molly days. Uh, shout out to Molly. Molly get no interviews this um this era. But uh, yeah, like this is a real good interview. I liked it a lot. I felt like Madonna uh, peeled back a couple of layers for us, but I also feel like Stina asked the tough questions and she got answers. <laughs> All right, drop the comments down below. It's your first time seeing this interview like me. What you think? You saw this interview before already. What you think? Let's y'all know how we do. Let's chop it up in the comments. Also, if y'all not ready, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Again, I got a whole another playlist. Been doing this since. The demos before the Madonna 1983 album. So make sure you check out the playlist. It's, go, it's at the end of this video, like right here. I'm pointing to it. Like maybe you can see it. I'm not sure. But it's going to be over here. You can click on it. And then, uh, yeah, make sure you hit me up on Patreon. Um, I try not to react to anything Madonna related on Patreon because this is a labor of love I'm doing for y'all, the journey. All right, but anyway, uh, y'all know what time it is. Start the comments down below. Hope everybody's out there feeling good, staying safe, and uh, see you guys next time.